Your turn. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> Flickr. Uh, how many people have used Flickr? A couple. A couple. Flickr, uh, and very generally, Flickr is a place where you can upload your pictures, you can modify them, you can share them. Um, people can make comments on them, and I've got a slide of it in just a second. Um, you can update the pictures, you can send the pictures straight from your camera, straight from, I think they've got a tool now, you can do it straight from your, um, or straight from your camera, straight from your phone. I'm going to admit right now, I am not a gadget girl. You see me walk in and I've got the big old laptop. You see David walk in, he's got, you've got the, everything going. To my internet phone, I got my video iPod. Yeah, so me, I confuse phones with cameras. I had a PDA about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. And then my daughter dropped it in chocolate milk. And I said, I'm not going to be a gadget girl until everyone's out of grade school. <laughs> I got 10 more years, damn it. Um, so it's, but, and it's really funny to not be a gadget girl and to be into some of these things. Because I just yesterday went to Target <laughs> and finally bought a digital camera. You know, everybody in the world would think I have owned a digital camera for many years because I work with other people's pictures all the time. Um, and I've got kids, so you should think I should have some camera. The kids were like, you don't throw this away? Wow. Uh, but we set up, uh, as I've done for many other people, I set up a, a Flickr account for them. Um, and then the nice thing I like about the Flickr account is that you can create an RSS feed. Do people know what an RSS feed? And you and I, I, I I'll do my job to explain it. And then, because okay. I think it's helpful to have different people yeah. explain it. Because an R, I think of an RSS feed, and it stands for uh, really simple syndication. I think there's another acronym, another terms that they use for it, too. I think of it as kind of a, a ticker tape. If you, some websites you go to, and there's kind of a ticker tape of information that keeps changing. That sort of thing. And with an RSS feed, people can subscribe to that and they can either get the ticker tape of information through an RSS reader or you might subscribe to it for your website. So then you do get that. And it doesn't necessarily scroll like that, but it's the headlines that somebody else has written onto your website. The example that I um, have often used is there are... Uh, well, there are press release distribution services that I know that we both have used, and they create an RSS feed that goes to thousands, easily thousands of people. So if I want to get a message out about um, an upcoming conference, there's an upcoming conference at the Humphrey Center tomorrow, the Freeman Forum. One of the ways that we got the word out about it was we sent a press release off to that distribution service, and then it went out to their RSS feed. When it goes out to that RSS feed, many people act, many people get that message in their RSS reader, and then some people just find it on different websites. Does that? Yeah, I, th I describe it as a, distri a distribution technology. It's sort of the glue that holds all the Web 2.0 technologies together, um, and it's you know it's an RSS reader is sort of like an email email software like Outlook or whatever. You get your emails in Outlook, you get your RSS feeds in whatever RSS reader you, you uh, feed reader you use. And if you see the little orange buttons on websites that say XML or little, uh, those are RSS feeds. If you click on them, you'll probably just see, you'll either see the headlines and links or you'll see gobbledygook that does just code, depending on, on what browser you're using. Um, but, you know, you can, using an RSS reader, you can subscribe to it and, and uh, you'll just get the messages as they're posted. I'm clicking through to an example. This is my, I really set up the, I, the RSS reader a while ago. Did anybody else have a Peeps diorama submission for the Pioneer Press? I just put that in. I did not win, but I was, I was ready. This is, um, and as I said, I, you know, this was a better example than what I've done for different businesses and, and nonprofit organizations, but this is kind of what your Flickr page might look like. And you have your pictures, and you can have a description, and you can tag it. So maybe I pretend I tagged it Kate and Anya, my, my kids' names. The, the pictures that we just did today, or they did yesterday, Minnesota Zoo. So the, all the Minnesota Zoo pictures over the years, will, I will be able to categorize um, for the future, you know, forever. If I click on Minnesota Zoo, all of those pictures will appear. So that's kind of what the Flickr looks like. More exciting to me, here's an example of this is a, a consortium of libraries up um, in Detroit Lakes, that area. Here we've got the Flickr feed up on their website. So if they have an event or a conference, the head librarian posts all the pictures to Flickr, which is very easy for her to do. It automatically is updated on their website. 
it's an easy way for them to post regular pictures uh, on their website. Often called badges, these these uh, sites that offer you know this technology will you know you can get a bag badge and they'll give you a code that you can paste in your website and that will display that con that content in real time. Um, or a chiclet or a or chiclet, widget. Widget. So yep. they're all sort of the same, different flavors of the yep. same sort of thing that you can do. So that um, well, another example that we're using is. Um, well, created a lot. My kids have had a blog for a long time, so we now are putting the pictures on the blog. But those pictures change, and so everybody's crowd is happy. But it makes it a lot nicer. I mean, and one of the things that they say in a couple of times is that the, the pictures and a picture is worth a thousand words. I mean, people love to see those pictures. People will come to your website to view pictures, especially if they think they might be in them. So if you've got events or something like that, all of a sudden you take some of those pictures and people will come to see that site. People will come to see. Yeah, and as you said, a picture's worth a thousand words. It often, often has much more impact than, I mean, people are visually oriented. So it will have a lot more impact than, than words will. And so with Flickr as well, you can create groups based on topical, you know. Um, I think uh, somebody, I don't know if somebody's done it. They must, somebody has had to have done it, but a, a Flickr pool or a group um, on poverty, and if you can show show the face of po poverty, that's much more you know that's a much more powerful thing than just reading about it, and uh, and that way when you tag your photos and you uh, you have you know people can subscribe to these groups and they talk about the photos and so forth, you sort of build a community on these sites that can then drive traffic to your website or, or you know get your message out whatever that message is. One example was eDemocracy, when eDemocracy did the e-debates last year. Um, has people heard of eDemocracy at all? Some. Well, one of the things they did is they hosted some e-debates among the, the gubernatorial candidates. I think so. I should know that. Yes. But they invited people to share, to, to share lots of different information just by using the, I think it was the MN politics tag. And then anybody with the Flickr account or some of the other accounts that we're going to talk to, if they flag that this is MN politics, it would feed into that site, into somebody else's centralized site. So I think that's about... Well, I get to switch them now. You get to switch now, because I think, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of the, the other point. Are there any... I, well, I'm wondering, um, what are some advantages of... Well, you said a few of the advantages of posting photos on the Flickr site versus like having them on your server, or is it just people can you know uh, for in a, things in my world, yeah. somebody can update their own pictures. They're not all sending oh, them to me, the webmaster, okay. to do, sure. which saves yeah, them money. Oh, I'm sorry. So we are asking, what are the advantages of using um, Flickr as opposed to posting the pictures yourself? They're, they're, they're easier to maintain. I mean, they're, they're just easier to update. They're easier to add to your picture. But they're also easier to archive. So then you've got an archive of it here. So maybe you've got a tag for annual meeting. Um, and then when, when 2007 annual meeting comes, they replace the 2006 pictures wherever you post them onto your website. You can post this, this feed either uh, by, by the tag. You can say, okay, in this space, in this space, we want this one little widget to only be the things that are related to the annual event. So then, when the 2007 pictures are available, the 2006 ones move down. So it automatically will update you, that for you. You also then at the bottom can say, show all the annual event meetings, and people can get all of them for 2007, 2006, 2005. So it's a nice way to do that too. The other advantage is that. Um, Maybe maybe your conference was on poverty, so you also include poverty as a tag. Well, then you've got the possibility, um, you know, David's got a web page where he's featuring the face of poverty. So he's got an RSS feed that will take anyone, anyone from his group or anyone who's tagged something with poverty. Well, your pictures will automatically go onto his page as well. So that's where it's a nice distribution service. You tap, you're tapping into the, that community. Of mm -hmm. people, you know, people like photos for one, re one reason or another, and um, and you can also you can also give away certain rights to use the photos. There's, uh, you can just specify how people can use uh, your photos, and um, there's coding. You can click on a on a on a photo in Flickr, and it'll give you coding to blog the photo. 
So you can actually get that network effect going as well. So you can it goes outside of uh, Flickr using their technology. The other thing that I forgot to mention is that people can comment on that picture once it's up, and you can turn off the the priority, the well, not the priorities, but the administration rights. Who can make comments? But you could say, all right, I have decided that uh, everybody who's come to the annual meeting can make comments on these pictures if they want to. So they can kind of become active on your site, too. They can, you know, they can say, oh, that, that's not Bob, that's Steve. He just had on Steve's hat, you know, whatever it is, you know, whatever that comment may be. But it, it invites people to be more active on the site. And I think with so many people that I work with, any time that you can get content from other people and you're not the one writing it, it saves you time. I mean... That and with so many people that I work with, the tagging is great. They don't they don't really know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about tagging. They don't that's that's they you know they're not quite there yet. But well, that was a lot easier than what I used to have to do. You know, your bill was a lot cheaper last month. You know, <laughs> than it was. So that and and, and that's great because I I do not enjoy cropping pictures, posting them out. I mean that's you know that's, enjoy the big checks, but I don't. So that's so anything else? I'm going to move to audio.